13 5 complex and mixed expressions complex and mixed expressions oh right this is gonna be fun i'm gonna ad lib this whole lesson hope i know how to fill in the blanks all right complex rational expressions are those where the numerator and or the denominator are fractions the numerator and or the denominator are fractions so what do we mean by that we can have a fraction in the numerator so give yourself a main fraction bar let's stick like 2 over x in the top and let's put like a 7 in the bottom that's a complex expression right. we have a fraction for a numerator maybe something like this maybe we have an x plus 3 in the numerator over an x over 5 in the denominator by the way is it important that you keep the fraction bars different lengths it is because if both of those fraction bars were the same length we wouldn't know if it's x plus 5 over x in the top divided by 5 or the way it is and there are two different things so it doesn't matter the length of those fraction bars. And then, of course, you know, you can have a fraction over a fraction. Two thirds over, I don't know, let's go n over n squared minus one, a little binomial action there. Okay. So now we have a fraction numerator and fraction denominator. And they can get more complex from there. And they will, because these are fun. Right? So complex fractions. Fraction in the numerator, or a fraction in the denominator, or a fraction in both. All right. A couple of different ways to solve these. One way will solve a certain kind of them, and the other way will solve everything. One way will solve a certain kind, and the other way will solve everything. All right. The first way is just simply division, right? We just got done dividing fractions, didn't we? And what did we do? We inverted the denominator and we multiplied. So that's one way of doing it. You say, I think I'll just do them all that way. You can. You can. You can do them all that way. So, you know, again, we're back to basically the division rule, right? You're just going to take this thing and you're going to put the D on the top and the C on the bottom, right? And it's just the division rule. So that's one way you can treat it. So if we go over and do that first example, right, our y is going to go on the top, and our 6 is going to go on the bottom, and we can just get rid of that denominator, right? We're inverting and multiplying. Right? Good. So again, we just did these a little bit ago. They usually weren't in this format. They were in with the, what, elementary style division symbol, right? <laughs> But you would have had 3 over x, elementary division symbol, 6 over y. But that's what it means, right? It was complex. And we can invert and multiply. And now we're going to look to our bum, right? Otherwise, we'll be 1. And it looks like y over 2x. Reduced to 3 and the 6, right? Algebra 1, we don't, don't even think we need to show that at this point. Hope, 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 hope. Okay, my box got a little low there. I don't know what it's doing down there. It should have been up there, but anyhow. So on the second one, what would your multiplication step look like? Go ahead and go ahead and do this to this one. You just want to make sure that you're thinking right, and if not, then we'll find out. Right? I mean, fractions, you're always thinking top and bottom. So, I mean, the only trick to this is to say, oh, yeah, that's a n minus 1 over 1, so when I flip it, it ends up like that, right? Agreed? Okay. And then from here on out, we're going to look to reduce before we multiply, but we can't on this one, right? Don't make the mistake of trying to cross out the n's. So why can't you do that, class? Just talk to me. Everybody just talk to me your own words. Yeah, right? That n to the minus 1 is tied together. It's binomial, so we can't do it. So you finish this thing off. And it's just 2n 
over. And honestly, on something like this, bottom times bottom, we should distribute and finish it off. So 3 times n is 3n, and 3 times a negative 1 is a negative 3. Remember, the only, the only reason we're leaving things in factored form is for time's sake, so we can really make sure you've learned all the things you're supposed to learn instead of taking up so much time to do individual problems. Kirsten. Don't do that forget. That's what will be the answer. Minor deduction, because I want you to be excellent, right? Okay, so that's the idea. All right, the, the second way, multiply denominator and numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Multiply the denominator and numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay, so let me try to get you guys to understand the focus here. When you see a problem like this, your focus, in this case, is on the denominator. And the thought is, and we've talked about this before when we did division. The thought is, if I could get the denominator to be 1, I'll no longer have a complex fraction. I'll just have a fraction in the numerator, but that'll be it, and it'll be over 1, so it'll just be a fraction. I'm good to go. And so your thought is... How do I get this to be 1? Get this to be 1. All right, I'm back to the Beatles again. Man, oh man, they keep popping up. All right, we got to get the bottom to be 1. And again, how do you do that? You multiply by its reciprocal. So your focus is on the denominator. And, of course, that's not legal right now, right? So how do we finish it? Same thing at the top, right? Whatever you do the bottom, do the same thing at the top. And you can see our denominator's gone. Gone, 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 gone. Yes, the denominator's gone. And our bum, if we can, no our bumming. Finish this one off, because... You guys messed this up a lot when it was in the rules section. So finish this one for me. You missed you messed up something similar. So the top, you know, is an 8, right? But my thought is, what'd you get on the bottom? Yeah, 3n squared. Now, if that 3 wasn't there, I wonder what you would have gotten. Because that was the one I had in the rule. I had like an x, two x's on bottom, an x and an x, or an n and an n. And a lot of you just wrote n instead of n squared or x instead of x squared, right? It's definitely 3n squared, right? All right, so don't make that mistake. So, again, this situation, same thing. Where's your focus on the denominator? You might say, Mr. Scarfy, this is a little bit longer methodology. Yeah, true that. But it'll solve everything. So I don't care which one you use, but you better be aware of the second one because the second one solves everything, and the first one only solves the simplistic ones. And again, just be careful. That 4 in the numerator times a 3 over n minus 1 is like a 4 over 1 in the top. Agreed? So the 4 goes times the 3. And hopefully you, you figure out that we're 12 over n minus 1. I think that's a 4 over 1 times a 3 divided by n over minus 1. All right, any questions on that, Kirsten? Say again. I didn't do what rule. Now I'm with you. I'm thinking like last year, last time. All right. So Kirsten says I never did this here. So you're right. Right. And so this thing just ends up too much color now. I got to use too many. Be 
Beautiful. Right? That's how you end up. So again, definitely seems longer. Seems like more work. But we'll take care of everything. Because the fun is getting ready to start. Are you ready for some fun? What? You're in algebra. Of course you're ready for fun. That's why you're so bummed that the school year is getting ready to end. You're going to be at home bored doing nothing. No joy in your life because there's no problems to work. Unless your parents make you do some problems. couple of years from now I might have a summer curriculum for you <laughs> you'll be thrilled you'll be hopefully you'll be gone by then though it won't affect you all right your little brothers and sisters all right more complex rational expressions as you look at our example right here okay you can do the first methodology on that but this is still a simplistic one of this kind <laughs> So you really could do method one as long as you do it correctly. But when we get to the more complex of this complex one, you can't. All right. So what I like to do in this situation, because notice we have a one plus a fraction in the numerator. I mean, that's, that's the difference here. And even if that was in the denominator, don't write this, but if it was inverted and I gave this to you originally, don't write this, don't write this, just getting you to think. I've seen some students think to do something like this. Does that work? And the answer is no. Because again, this is one thing. And not only that, you, not only does it get multiplied to that, it gets multiplied times to 1. And guess what? Now your bottom will look like that. Gee, that was a big change. <laughs> That's funny. It just went from 1 plus 3. Oh, let's see. Oh, that's an x, isn't it? 1 plus 2 over x to x over 2 plus 1. Yippee! That was a great maneuver. And most students won't even write that correctly. They'll just... Sometimes put a one there and think they have a two in the bottom, and they don't. So none of that's true, and you can't do that methodology. So multiply the numerator and the denominator by the... I'm going to use three letters. Any idea what three letters I'm going to put in the blank? I heard it. The LCD of the denominators. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put denominators in quotes. And I mean denominators of the, this is too many words to write, fractional numerator or fractional denominator. <laughs> All right, that's a lot. So let me show it to you in, in practicality. All we're worried about are the denominators of a fraction in the top and or if there's a fraction in the bottom, it's denominator. So, for example, I'm not worried about the six, the denominator of the whole fraction, the main fraction. I'm worried about that x because it's the denominator of a top fraction. And if I had a bottom fraction, I'd be worried about its denominator, and I'd want the LCD of that. And we'll get a, an example or two of that. So right now... My focus is right there. That's what I'm worried about. And that's what I need the LCD of. And that's pretty easy. Because the LCD of X is X. And so what do we do? We multiply numerator and denominator by that LCD. So I'm going to do this on the left because you guys distribute better from the left. So I'm going to do an X over x on the left. Notice I'm doing the top by x and the bottom by x. And to make things clear, what else should I do before I commence to multiply? Parentheses, right, on that top. Because it is a binomial and we have to multiply it times both. And, and this is something that gets students, they don't distribute here and they, they end up off. All right, so let's see 
What happens in the front? What's the first term of the front? Of the top, I'm sorry. It is an X, right? X times 1 is X. So what would be the second term of the top? Right? And do you need, so just 2? I heard 2. 2X? Like that? 2X? 2 over X. Like that. 2X over X to the power of 10. 2X over X squared. I don't think that's squared. All right. At ease. At ease. I think we better show the step. All right. So if you started something, just scribble it because way too many of you don't know what to do, and therefore we better show the step, step by step, inch by inch on this first example. Let's so take your green and do a little x over 1 for our x. Take your blue and do the 1 plus 2 over x. That's our top, yes? And let's finish our bottom, by the way, while we're at it. Everybody knows the bottom is 6x. Okay, good. So the only issue is the top. So now, to further make sure you don't make a mistake, let's show the next step. Let's distribute. And you all got this right, but I'm going to show it in this form. So you did an x over what, um, 1 times 1, right, to get your x. And everybody said x on the first part. But this is where we had an issue. So again, I want to show this second distribution. And I hope you agree it's x over 1 times 2 over x. Does that make sense? Right, I distributed the x times the 2 over x. Isn't that what you do with something in front of a parentheses? Distribute? It, are you following? Because I'm looking at a little puzzled, I see some puzzled faces. Are you okay with that? Do you see we distributed? So, you know, again, all of you in the beginning said x in the front, but now what's in the back? Arbum. What's in the back? So just like that, you want me to just put two? Thank you. All right, x plus two. It's like pulling teeth. That's okay. That can be fun sometimes. If you're the dentist, I guess. You have laughing gas. And it's, and it's fun. Not when you're done and you go to take a drink of the water fountain and the water dribbles down your chin. Have you ever done that? Isn't that yeah. a blast? <laughs> you're numb and you can't feel the water in your mouth and you don't know to. It's an interesting thing. Can we reduce that? Can we reduce that? Yes. Yes. What are you going to reduce? Isn't the X tied into the two on the top, right? Aren't they tied together? They are one. Do not separate them. All right, you can't. You can't factor anything. We can't reduce. That's it. Final answer. All right. All right. Just remember, it's one thing. If you could have factored, you could reduce. See what happens is here's what happens, guys. You you get into something new and different. And, and then all of a sudden, because it's new and different, you think you don't know anything anymore. But you still know all the other stuff you learned. So you just apply it. Don't let the fact that it's new and different make you think, well, then I don't know anything else anymore. All right. We've seen that before. Well, now you get to the second kind. And there's no way you're doing method one on this second one. No way, Jose. All right. Do you agree? So what are your thoughts? Talk to me. What are you going to think? Go ahead. Talk out loud. What are you going to think? Where are you focusing? What are you thinking? Go ahead. Talk. Come on. Talk. I love it. Sounds like you're speaking in tongues. Okay. So I got to do more of this in the future. Uh, so if you look at it, hopefully your focus is here, 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 and here. Agreed? Right, our focus is the denominator of any fractions in the top and the denominators of any fractions in the bottom. So therefore then, your next thought would be, what is the LCD, right? 
So what's the LCD? XN or NX, all right? Depends on which one floats your boat. I'm going to do XN just to aggravate some people, all right? I'm going to do XN top and XN bottom. You know why I aggravated some people? Because they, they'll say, it's not in order, Mr. Scarfer. You didn't put them in order. You told us that you're supposed to put those variables in order. They're supposed to be in order. Alphabetical, Mr. Scarfer, what are you doing? We're not done with the problem, right? So what does it matter? We're not done yet. When we're done, if we need to, we'll put them in order. It doesn't really matter right now. But if it bothers you, you compulsive, obsessive, go ahead and make it NX, and you'll be happier if that's you. Okay. So again, what happens with students is if they distribute in their head we know that the X's in the first situation are going to divide out, right? And they somehow think that the green XN in the front is no longer an XN, just an N in front, and then they only distribute the N. And that's not true, right? That's not true. So if that's going to be your brain, you better do the step. So again, I'm going to show the step this time again, and then... Once I show the step, I'll show you how to do it without the step. So again, this would be an xn over 1 times a 4 over x, the plus sign in the middle, the xn over 1 times the 2 over n. That's the top. Right, all I did was distribute, do you agree? I distributed the XN to both things in the top, the front term and the back term. Again, instead of squinting and trying to read the screen, if you look at your paper and see what you are distributing, you'll know what you're supposed to write. Right? So let's not do the bottom yet. Let's finish the top. Because now you see that this happens, right? And that happens. And therefore your top ends up being 4n. Uh, and I just crossed out an x instead of an n. That's what happens when your eyes get bad. Right? That was good. That's got to go. So we end up, what, a 4n plus 2x is the numerator, right? So, can you now distribute in your head the bottom? If you think you can, try it. If not, do it the same way we did the top. But if you think you can do the bottom in your head, then do the bottom in your head. Just be careful. Remember, each time you have the xn. And so if you did that, you should have had n minus x. Right? And again, if you can't get that, then do it longhand for you. Physically distribute it like we did the numerator, so therefore it's going to be this over that. Can we factor the top? Can the top factor? First law of factoring. Factor out common factors first. Are there common factors in the top? Yeah, like the number two. So does the top factor? Yes. Do we want to factor it? We're close, but no. Because we'd end up with a 2n plus x, and that's not going to do anything with an n minus x. But you always got to be thinking of factoring to reduce if it's possible. you got to look at it. This doesn't reduce, so we won't. It's just like a 10 over 7. Is it 10 to 2 times 5? Yeah, but does it help you because you got a 7 on the bottom? No. So we're not going to factor it, but we're going to think it. Okay. You can also... I have no idea what I want to put in that blank. <laughs> it's funny. All right. What in the world? <laughs> what in the world was I thinking? You could also add the numerator and or the denominator, invert and multiply. 
So I'm just trying to show you the different methodologies. So let me get a little higher for you. So we could take the, the top one, and if we do the method we just learned a minute ago, we'd multiply the top and bottom by what? No, if we were going to do the first method, the one we just finished, we would multiply the top and bottom of that fraction by x, right, the LCD, and, and that solves that, it does. But I just want to show you an alternate method, and that is we could add up this denominator and no longer have two terms, right? And how would I add it? I'd get this fraction to have a common denominator, which means I got to multiply the bottom by x. Do you agree? And whatever I do to the bottom, do the same thing to the top. So what's my top? Negative 2. And what do you end up on the bottom? Add the numerators and put them over the common denominator. The bottom is going to be x. What's the top? What's the top? How about x plus 1? How about 1 times x is x and x plus 1 is x plus 1? All right. Again, I don't know. You guys get goofy because all of a sudden you're looking at a big thing. It, look, if, if, if all I gave you, I need my magic pen. If all I gave you was this, aren't you going to say that's x plus 1? I mean, I hope. So it's x plus 1. Right. Again, you just got to focus on where you are. Okay, so this methodology then is you can add the numerators and or the denominator, invert and multiply. So again, the last step would be, oh, that's going to disappear. I'm using my magic pen. Ah, awesome. There it goes. Goodbye. All right, let's put it back there. So again, what do you have on the top? A negative 2 over 1. What do you do to the bottom? Invert it. X over X plus 1, right? And you can finish it that way. Some students think this is an easier methodology and safer for them. So you have a negative 2x over x plus 1. No other, there's no reducing. I did look to RBUM, but there was none, and, and you're done. Now, that method gets a little tricky on the second example, but you could do it. So, the last little bit we have left. I want you to add the numerators, add the denominators, and then I want you to invert and multiply. All right? So I want you to do this methodology on that last example. All right, so once we have, once we added the numerator, put them over the common denominator at the top, and added the numerators and put them over the common denominator at the bottom, now we're just going to invert and multiply. So I just usually come up here and do that, right? going to invert and multiply. I'm definitely going to R-bum. The A and the A and the B and the B are gone, 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 gone. Yes, they are gone. Nothing else is left. But Kirsten, guess what? I'm going to go 2A plus B over A plus B. Like that? All right. So I will put my final answer in alphabetical order. Because we want order in the world. Can't reduce that. Close. But you can't. Because of that negative 2A. It messes everything up. Any questions on any of that? Wasn't that fun? What a great day.